Today I'm going to be comparing two scales. The Wyding Smart Body Analyzer, which retails for about $150 on Amazon. And then the Fitbit Aria, which I've actually owned myself for a couple years. And I just wanted to try out the Wyding's because it had a couple more features to see how it compared to the Fitbit. So if you're shopping for a Wi-Fi scale, these are kind of the two major players in the market. So that's why I wanted to review both of these. Um, the Wyding's offered a couple additional features, such as a heart rate monitor and air quality measurement. And um, I just kind of wanted to get it to see how it compared and how it's app tracking compared to the Fitbit, which I had been using for a while. So if you're in the market for a Wi-Fi scale, hopefully this review will help you uh, choose the best one. So you might wonder why in the world you might need a uh, Wi-Fi enabled scale. Um, the reason why I bought these is because you know if you're into measuring your weight at all You don't want to have to manually track it over time every day You weigh yourself over weeks and months This just makes it a lot more convenient for every time you weigh yourself It's just automatically uploaded via Wi-Fi, you know into your phone or whatever app you're using to track your weight So it's just makes it obviously a lot more convenient They also both these scales also monitor your body fat percentage So if you're trying to get more muscle definition or even just to get a general directional idea of where your body fat percentage is headed or where it's at um, These also help with that now, they don't give you the most accurate reading in the world. For that, you're going to need to do hydrostatic body weighting or use a bod pod. But those aren't really practical for most people, so these scales kind of just give you an idea of where, you're, you know, where your body fat percentage is headed over time. So it's really convenient, and you can track it over an app with the chart or graph, so it's kind of nice to have it, and that's mainly the reason why I bought it. Now, the, the way that these do measure your body fat percentage is it, do, it basically um, sends a little electrical signal through your feet and measures kind of like the resistance of that signal through your feet and it gives you a body fat percentage readout. But let me just start by quickly going over the design um, and the features of, of the scales. Uh, the, here's the Fitbit scale here. You can see it uses tempered glass on the top. Uh, they both have the tempered glass on the top. And here's the, uh, the, the LCD readout screen. Now, I'll show you how these operate in just a second as far as what it shows you when you weigh yourself. I just wanted to go over the, uh, the design of each. Now you can set the measurements to be kilograms, pounds, or stones. I don't really know what stones is, but I use pounds, so, but that is a setting you can set in the app. Both of these scales can take um, measurements for up to eight different people, so you can have eight, so you can have eight profiles set up uh, with each of these scales. So the Fitbit can measure between 20 and 350 pounds. And then on the back, you kind of have this um, bubble. It's like plastic bottom and then your four feet rubberized feet here so it doesn't really slip when it's sitting on the floor. It's actually an important um, feature because I'll show you when I go over the widening scale. The widening scale is actually very slippery so you're going to want to add your own kind of rubberized feet. At least I would, I would recommend it because I almost slipped a few times on that scale having it just on the wood floor. Now here it takes four AA batteries. Um, Fitbit says this will last uh, six months with like four measurements taking four readings a day I found that the first set of batteries I used with this lasted well over a year so battery life not really an issue um, but that's about it that's a Fitbit scale kind of like really simple design same as the uh, widening scale has a simple design too and I'll show you that in a second and then here is the widening scale which is actually slightly bigger about half an inch on the on the side and on the bottom so slightly larger footprint but nothing obnoxious and you can see it's pretty much a um, similar design the tempered glass there now I will say the widening scale is a little bit nicer and it's, as it is bigger when you step on it you feel like it's a little bit more spacious, a little bit more room to stand on. So if you have larger feet, something to keep in mind. That was just something I noticed when I was using the scales. The widening scale is able to measure between 9 to 396 pounds. It does feature the LCD screen which is a little bit higher. It's just a lot nicer screen and you'll see that when I'm going through the operation of these scales in just a minute. Um, so that's something to note. Here on the back you just have the... Uh, the units and measure button so you can change to Fahrenheit or Celsius because this scale does give you uh, weather readings which is nice and then a Bluetooth connection button and get to your phone to get the scale set up. Neither Now neither of these scales were really difficult to set up you just follow the on-screen instructions I'm not going to really go over that because it's pretty straightforward once you just follow the steps um, so no issues with that and here I was telling you about the the non-rubber feet here plastic which can make the scale very, very slippery as you can see you know, so it's kind of actually, I've almost slipped on it a couple times getting on it, but um, just something to note. So it can be a little bit dangerous, so I would, I would recommend putting rubber feet on there. Um, and then as far as the batteries, this takes four AAA batteries, and Whiting says that um, lasts you, should last you up to eight months. So pretty good there. Pretty simple, straightforward design, as you can see with both of these. So now first up, I'm going to step on the Fitbit scale and, give, and show you the screen readings. I uh, apologize up front for the shaky camera because I'm going to try to hold the camera as I step on the scale. But basically, um, once you step on the scale, it gives you it gives you your body weight. So it just takes a couple seconds and then it gives you your weight. 
and then your body fat percentage and it detects who you are so that's my initials and then it's going to tell you it's uploading into the app. One thing to notice is it does take a it does take a little bit longer on this scale than a regular like twenty dollar scale to um, to give you your weight readout. What's well, something I had to get used to, but anyways, there it goes. It gives you the check mark and says, "Hey, it loaded it up into the app." So here's how the widening scale looks. So when you step on it, obviously, it gives you your weight, similar to the Fitbit, and then it gives you your body fat percentage. It finds who you are, detects you based on your weight, and uh, updates your profile, your body fat percentage. And then now it goes into the heartbeat, heart rate measurement. It does take a second, so it's, if you're in a hurry. So 68 there, and then your CO2 reading, and it gives you temperature as well. Indoor temperature, that is. And that's it. Now one other thing to note with the Y things, as I was mentioning, the scale, the, the LCD screen is a lot nicer, so you can see it's a lot higher definition see all the little squares versus the Fitbit scale here which has looks kind of like this uh, not really a huge deal but the black background on this is a lot nicer um, you can see also that it's I'm leaning my knee on the bottom left corner of the scale right now and what that's doing um, the widening scale has something called positional control and, and gravity compensation I don't know it seems a little bit over engineered to me but if you're standing on the scale you know kind of too heavy on one side it will flash right there and tell you hey you have too much weight on the back left corner so sometimes when you're standing on it if you're not standing on it evenly you know I'm here I'm kind of leaning forward but I guess it's there, there it goes kind of flash but you know sometimes when I was staying when I've been standing on the scale you kind of have to rebalance yourself just a little bit so it can be a little bit annoying the Fitbit just takes your reading right away regardless of where you're standing on the scale but once you get used to standing on the scale it won't come up too often I don't know if that gives the Wythings uh, more accuracy, but I am going to test it here with a 50 pound kettlebell. So we can kind of compare the two and you'll see that they're both within a tenth of a pound. In order to demonstrate that, just so you can kind of be confident in that, I, I have a 50 pound kettlebell here which I'm going to put on both of these uh, scales so you can just kind of see how accurate they are now. Again, apologize for the shaky video, but let's go ahead and put this on there like that and you should be able to see 50.1. Let me put this on the Wything scale. Bam, 50. So within a tenth of the Fitbit. And the final thing on the Wything scale is that they added a new weather screen function as a firmware update. It used to simply tell you if it was supposed to rain that day or not. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't get the scale to update, so I sent an email to Wythings and they responded that the feature is rolling out in batches so that the scale should update itself soon. In any event, this is a really cool added feature since you can weigh yourself first thing in the morning, which is uh, incidentally the best time to weigh yourself you have the ability to get an idea of what the weather is going to be for that day. So here is kind of what the screen should look like. And you can see it gives you two average temps for the day and then a quick outlook of the forecast. You know, sunny, cloudy, clear, etc. So it's, so it's really convenient to not have to check your phone or go outside to check the weather when you first wake up in the morning right after you weigh yourself. Now that brings us to the actual apps. So before we get into that, I wanted to uh, just mention that both of these scales are able to share share their data with a lot of other apps, um, including the built-in iOS health app. Although the, the Fitbit Aria needs the use of a workaround in order to do so, you have to download another third-party app that allows you to be able to sync it to the health app. Wythings can even feed info into the Fitbit app itself in case you already use the Fitbit app for some other Fitbit products you may already have um, that you use for tracking. And finally, I just wanted to show you quickly the, um, the apps that, that accompany, that go with the scale. So you can kind of see how your weight and all the data is recorded and how it's graphed out because it's basically the gist of the Wi-Fi scale um, is to be able to track all your data, right? So here's the Fitbit app and um, you know, you can track a bunch of different activities. I don't, I don't really, I really only really track the weight one. Obviously you can track exercise if, if you have some kind of Fitbit tracking device or, or whatever, you can track all that information here. But what I mainly use is the weight one. So what you do, ha what you're presented with here is simply, you know, you just have a graph of all your uh, weight points over time, all your data points. And when you click into it, you can kind of just view the whole graph. And um, you know you can see your individual weights on every specific day. And here, where you have multiple weights in a day, it just um, displays them vertically there with multiple dots. You can also you can also view this in landscape um, orientation, so you can kind of scroll over. And up here is where it shows like how much it displays on your screen at a time. So here's one week at a time, um, so that you can view every day. Or if you go to one year, you can view uh, you know across your screen as one year's span of time. So that's all the data points and each. Each data point actually represents the average for the week. And then you can go by three months or one month. So that's 
That's basically how it works. So in the graph with the Fitbit app, you can view a couple different things. You can view your weight, uh, lean versus fat, and the body mass index. Um, lean versus fat is really the only way that it kind of displays your body fat percentage. It doesn't graph the body fat percentage individually, so it's a little bit annoying because you, you have to click in each one to see what your fat percentage was tracking over time. Um, but the Whitings app actually graphs it as its own graph, which is nice. It's a, it's a lot better that way. I don't know why Fitbit doesn't do it, so that's one of the things that always uh, bothered me about it. But you can at least view your weight um, over a course of time, so that's really what I use it for anyway. If it had the fat, I would, I would track that a lot more. And here you can see, you can just scroll through yesterday where I had two weight measurements, so it will list all your different... the uh, uh, all the different times that you took your weight in that day and if you want you can just delete out all the data points that you don't like um, there's also challenges in here if you want to set up challenges if that kind of thing motivates you or you know you can you can invite your friends into your Fitbit activity that's kind of things I don't really use too much but they're there available if you if you're really into Fitbit app. like I say I pretty much just track the weight here under the account section you can view your aria scale here and it does show your battery levels so that's a convenient way to uh, monitor if you need to replace your battery soon this does show all your recent weight weigh-ins um, under your initials and for your different users you can obviously delete each one that you don't want to use and then you can view here the different people you have using the scale and again it can be up to eight different users and then the final thing here is where you can kind of set your goals so it's here is where you kind of put your body weight goal let's say I want to hit 160 and then back in your dashboard it will show you here how many pounds you have to go to hit that weight so it tracks it like that it also does show it in the graph as well as a dashed line so you can kind of monitor your progress so pretty straightforward and you know that's kind of simply how the app works with the uh, Fitbit R scale and then next I want to just quickly show you the how the Whiting's uh, scale works um, when you initially go into it there's a little bit more data that's displayed it seems to be a little bit more cluttered at first the first screen you you view here is, is called their timeline with all these different activities you can have you know you can measure your heart rate so this just gives you a snapshot and then your weight and stuff and if you wanted to view the graph you can tap here and you can see here it's similar to the Fitbit it's a little bit more it looks a little bit more confusing because it shows an average weight which is this solid line and you can also turn this you know um, horizontal to or landscape mode but I you know and you can tap into each of the individual data points which is nice what I like about this is you can click on the fat mass and get your body fat percentage so here it kind of tracks it over time so if you want to monitor that that's kind of nice this is an anomaly I was messing around this morning but anyway that that's really convenient and then your body mass BMI I don't really use that too much but the fat and weight this is a lot better with the Y things because you can get those specific um, types of data graphed out which is to me the most important things with using these scales you know with the Whitings app you can um, delete individual um, weigh-ins so here you go seven more items when I was testing the scale you have all these different weigh-ins you can kind of delete whichever ones you want if you don't want multiple ones in a day or, or any ones that were erroneous for some reason so here in the dashboard section, just another way to kind of look at your data. It shows your weight up here. This also tells you your progress for the week. So this week you want to try to gain 1.2 pounds. You have 4.2 pounds left on 160 pounds set goal. And here you just set the goal by dragging this bubble. So let's say you want to be 165 and you want to lose, or sorry, you want to gain, let's say 0.8 pounds a week. You just set however many um, pounds per week you want to gain or lose um, up to a tenth of a pound increments. And then, you know, with the Whiting's scale having a lot more sensors and data, you have the heart rate uh, monitor here. It just gives you a quick update and then your, your air quality and temperature indoors. So that's, that's kind of convenient. Obviously here you can have friends. You can add friends and um, set up your profile. Some reminders for different things you want to uh, maybe set up for yourself related to fitness and stuff like that. Um, and then in the devices here is where it gives you their battery level. And then in here is where I was telling you you can do the screen customization. So you can turn off any of the sensors you don't want to view on screen when you're saying on the scale. You can turn off everything but the weight. So if you wanted to simply use it as weight, you can just, just have that selected. And these can also be rearranged in, in the order which you'll see them on the screen as you step on the scale. So that's really, it's really a nice feature and, and very convenient to be able to display that. But anyway, uh, that's the Whitings app. So in the end, either of these scales will get the job done in being able to track your weight and body fat percentage. Uh, with the Whitings scale, having the definite edge because of its additional features and sensors, nicer screen, compatibility with more apps, and a slightly larger size for your feet. Um, also, if you noticed in parts of the video earlier, you can see that on my Fitbit scale, the screen has started wearing out. Some of the LCD crystals look like they have really lost their ability to display full dark blocks across the top. But luckily this is really only in the animations that appear across the top of the screen when, when you're weighing yourself. So in no way it really affects the readout or anything like that. Both of these scales are available in, in two different colors, uh, white and dark blue for the Whiting scale, and then a white and or black for the Fitbit scale. I personally think the white color is the one to get since they don't show as many footprints and dust and crap 
um, compared to the darker colors when the scale's sitting on your bathroom floor, it really collects a lot of dust and stuff. Um, the white one is really the preferable color to me. The Whiting scale is also $150, which is $30 more than the Fitbit scale. But in my opinion, the Whiting scale is well worth the premium. It's a fantastic scale and really, really fun to use. So if you are into weight measurement and fitness at all and you want to get a Wi-Fi scale, I'll definitely pick up the Wythings. I think it's the best scale out there. But if you're interested in learning any more about either of these scales, please uh, check the links in the description below. And as always, take care.